Hello, lovely podcast people. <clears throat> first things first. If you're listening to this podcast, it's probably you are probably a regular listener. And because the title of the podcast, I don't think is alluring enough to bring any of the uh, part timers on board. So I just want to say this early doors that Mac Nutrition Life on the 27th of November. Sorry, if you are a long term listener, you probably have heard me say this. But I'm going to put a link in the show notes. If you want to come to Mac Nutrition Live, which I have 99.999% committed myself, it's 100%, let's be honest, 100%. Oh, I'm getting those, you know, those like commitment um, butterflies, like quick run away, uh, panic, <laughs> I'm committing to something. Uh, yeah, I'm getting those when I say 100%. That's bad, isn't it? But I'm going to speak at Matt Nutrition Live. I'm probably more like 99% sure that the topic is going to be something like rapid fat loss protocols and, uh, you know, an update on the science, a re-exploration of the data, and then some really, well, I think I said this in last week's podcast, but digging into the exact, mi- not mindset, because that makes it sound whack, the numbers, the how to do it, the protocol of you and your situation and where you're at. So anyway, I'm speaking on that. And then obviously, as I've said before, body image is going to be discussed, which is going to be amazing. Intuitive eating and intentional weight loss, amazing. And binge eating, amazing. It's just a great mix of talks that complement each other. And uh, anyway, if you sign up for my Mac mail, which I know lots of you already are, Uh, And I don't spam, like I send one email a month probably. I mean, that's generous actually. I haven't sent one for like six months. (laughs) But anyway, you'll get 80 pounds off uh, the full price ticket for Mac Nutrition Live, which is, you know, it's just ridiculous value. You know, considering people pay two, three, four, five hundred pounds for nothing uh, in terms of fitness industry you know, quote unquote, education. Uh, You know, these are expert speakers. And the other thing is, is the way you get treated is phenomenal. And you get this, the Orchard Hotel four star buffet lunch, which is amazing. So again, you don't waste 10 pounds going and buying lunch from somewhere. You don't have to bring it yourself. Then you get all day refreshments. So you don't go and buy like five coffees and spend 87 pounds on coffee. Um, at a local Costa. Anyway, and then you get the gift bag, which again, like we, the gift bag is probably worth 15 pounds or more. And, uh, you know, considering what we're going to give you, there's a special secret gift, which is like a decent gift. It's not just like, oh, here's a protein bar or whatever. Um, anyway, go do it. Sign up for my Mac Mel. I'll send you a coupon, 80 pounds off. It's like 40% off the ticket. It's unbelievable value. But as a thank you for basically giving me your email address so that I can tell you other cool stuff that I have, like my tour, 2022. Ah, oh, I need to get a tour date book, booked in. Uh, I think in Dublin as my first jump back into it. But anyway, it'll be good. You can come hear me speak. We can have some selfies if you're into that or a hug if you're into that. After party is still, we still have room at the after party. Dinner if you want to do the whole shebang. Anyway, I'll leave that there. This week's, this episode of the podcast is going to be titled approximately what exactly denotes maintenance calories. That's probably the title. Because I'm, I'm posting this stuff at the minute about fat loss, you know, after PCOS wearing this month, I've done a few fat loss posts. And I just this question about, and I have to keep asking people, what do you mean by maintenance? What are you asking here? Because the, the rest of their questions suggest they're not really talking about maintenance calories. So uh, we need to go back to the origins of the word maintenance. Like ignore nutrition, ignore science, ignore, everything. just go back to English language. <laughs> maintenance. You know, Martin, should I jump straight back to maintenance calories? Yes. You know, for instance, as an answer, I might give yes. (laughs) Oh, but Martin, if I jump straight to 
maintenance. Calories. Won't I gain fat? At maintenance. Calories. Well, no, you won't, because you're at maintenance. Calories. Yeah, but I was if I was dieting aggressively. And you know I'm only on a thousand calories a day. I'm in a two thousand calorie deficit or fifteen hundred calorie deficit, and then I jump straight back the very next day to maintain its calories. Won't I gain fat? No, as long as you eat at maintenance, M- maintenance, maintenance, not a surplus, not a deficit. Maintenance. Jump back to maintenance calories. The number of calories to maintain. Okay, I'll stop. But hopefully, you're getting my point here. And I, I just struggle when p pe- because what's happening is they're missing out words. They're missing out definitions. They're changing the definition of the word. What they need to say is, for instance, if I do a diet. And my maintenance calories are three thousand a day, and I lose twenty pounds. Should I jump back to the same number of calories that I was eating twenty weeks ago? My maintenance calories for the me that was twenty pounds heavier and not metabolically adapted or any of that jazz. No, no, you shouldn't, because that is what's called a surplus. For the new you, but you could jump to maintenance calories for you in this time and space. Now, I just wanted to put this out. Hopefully, that you know, I'm not being overly funny. I'm being a bit harsh, maybe, but it's frustrating. I'm not annoyed.、Uh, I'm just disappointed. No, I'm not annoyed. I just, it's just funny, isn't it? Because. Maintenance, 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 maintenance. It means maintenance. Now, th- there's also this thing, you know. Like,、uh, anyway, I won't go there. The point is, is you've also got two things which I discuss in my tour talks about actual maintenance versus predicted maintenance. I.e. Uh, Martin, uh, and it sometimes it may just be people being lazy with their questions. But I even say this on M and U. There's no stupid questions, but there are lazy questions, and a lazy questions means I can't give you a good answer. So, if they say I've worked out my estimated maintenance calories using a calculator and numbers that I predict I'm burning during, say, my active daily activity or exercise, whatever. And I mean to get that maintenance, and I'm gaining weight, or、um, I work that maintenance out, and I minus 500 calories, and I'm not losing weight or losing fat. The point is, it's predicted. It's you're using a predictive equation, which is imperfect. Calories counting is imperfect. Prediction of energy out is imperfect. We just need to u- use. The very basic skill that we have, which leads us often down the wrong path, but observation of the outcome. Oh, we don't seem to be losing. Well, you're not in a deficit then, so you need to make some adjustments.、Uh, but yes, actual maintenance will lead to the maintenance of the status quo to the current body composition, etc. You know, a deficit will lead to a loss of energy from the body. You know, and the the opposite for a surplus. So, what are maintenance calories? It's just really important to know what you're talking about. Maintenance calories、uh, will be different for different people. You know, someone saying, you know, if I, I've got PCOS, so, you know, if I eat maintenance calories, I gain fat. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> You may be eating at a predicted maintenance, for instance, or you know, and the same thing happens with a predicted deficit. You know, I'm eating in a deficit. I'm not losing fat. You're not in a deficit. <laughs> It doesn't happen. Look at the studies with real people in the real world. It doesn't matter. You know, I literally had this comment the other. Day. You know, if I switch from wheat-based carbohydrates to vegetables like broccoli. 
I lose fat, even though I'm eating the same number of calories. It's like, you're not, <laughs> you're definitely not. Um, but they did actually go on to talk about, because this is a problem why I keep being specific with my words about fat or weight. Because yes, with fluctuating levels of carbohydrate intake, you'll get fluctuating levels of water within the body. And this messes people up. Likewise, it's hard to see a def, you know, this is why, you know, an aggressive deficit is sometimes nice because you just see the scale weight moving, even though a huge proportion of that may well just be water from inside your muscles going. So it's important to understand or, or be specific with what you're saying. If you're in an actual deficit, you'll be losing energy from the body. That is the physics of the situation. As I keep, you know, I keep saying, if you are spending more, then is, you know, if more is coming out of your bank account than is going in, it will go down. It's, n it, there's no hormones or market pressures or economical or political situation that's going to change your bank account. It's going down, you know, which is, you know, my biological reference for, oh, what about, you know, if you have metabolic syndrome, then does it, you know, well, I'm insulin resistant. It's just, not the case. Um, that if you're in a deficit, there'll be energy. Now, there there are ratios of you might be losing more five pound notes than 10 pound notes or whatever. I'm getting a bit specific here, but you might lose more carbohydrate as part of that energy deficit, but you've only got a finite amount of carbohydrate in the body. So once that's gone, then you're gonna turn to fat and maybe protein. But again, your body doesn't tend to take a lot of protein for energy. So you, if you're in a deficit, you'll be losing fat. But the, the ability to see these reductions on the scales trips people up because they do it for a week. And, you know, especially with females whose hormones change over their monthly cycle, it hides that change and they go, well, what's the point? And they have one day that's a surplus of 1500 calories. And then that hugely undermines the, again, another reason why a big deficit is often good because, you know, the underreporting that typically occurs in humans gets kind of removed a bit. So... There you go, what, what are maintenance calories? I just wanted to clarify that. I said I would after last podcast and hopefully I have described more of what, what we're talking about when we talk about maintenance calories. So yes, you can jump, jump back to maintenance calories after diet, but it has to be your actual current maintenance calories. And you can use what your rate of weight loss was. You know, I'm only losing half a pound a week. And um, that's maybe, you know, 1500 calorie deficit over the week, give or take. And um, if you then do a 1500 calorie surplus, you've wiped that out. But going back to my previous point, but in that instance, okay, 1500 calorie over the week. Um, so you're going to increase your calories by, you know, only a small amount daily, a couple of hundred calories increase. And that's back to your maintenance roughly. Now you can then try and build calories in because there might have been some reduction in your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, your e energy expenditure that's not to necessarily to do with steps, not necessarily to do with, you know, your exercise training program or anything. And you might be able to build more than those 200 calories at the end of the diet. But anyway, you want to, and, and this, yeah, let me say this, what you ideally want to try and do with care for some people is Okay, that's your deficit. Then you do the predictive equation and you look where, how far apart the two things are existing. And you go, oh, I'm still 400 calories less than my predict, you know, what a calculator would predict my maintenance is. I'm gonna try and stepwise up, you know, this is the kind of reverse dieting discussion. I'm gonna add 100 calories extra a day on top of that 200, 300. It's such a small amount of calories. If you are, you know, I'm unfortunately I'm talking about people who count calories. In my current aggressive deficit, I'm not. I just wasn't there with my head and mentality and organization to be doing that just yet. So you add the 300 calories and you see how things go. And more often than not, people are pleasantly surprised. And, um, you know, they can add another 100 calories and get close to back where that predictive value is. Cool. I'm going to leave it there. That's a, that's a short podcast, I think. Should we do guesses? I'm going to go 18 minutes. 
roughly. I um, hope you enjoyed it. I said that, yeah, what I'm going to do actually is um, stop this and start a new podcast recording and talk about, uh, I, I've got written on a post-it note here from last podcast, which was eat as little as you can. The eat as little as you can diet. Um, just to discuss some of the mentality around that um, for your interest, because I'm getting lots of questions. But again, for all the numbers and the calculation, and I'm probably going to write some, you know, some sort of ebook with a calculator and a spreadsheet and some information on rapid fat loss, because it just doesn't really exist in the format that I talk about it. And um, for the audience that I talk about it for, like not bodybuilders, not athletes, not just um, lean young guys. And I'll, I'll discuss a lot of that at uh, Matt Nutrition Live on the 27th. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Much love.